HCI physical considerations in HCI design. Introduction The basis for sound design of screens, forms, websites, and little basis includes the special use of fonts, color, and layout design to communicate to users to help them do the right thing with the input and output they encounter. To examine the underlying reasons for much of the design you learn, it is useful to look at human sensory capabilities and limitations that will inform you that inform our design. In keeping with the HCI philosophy, an analyst should be able to compensate, overcome, or replace human senses to a varying extent. So here are uh, some of the senses that we use in our interaction with computer. First, we have the vision. So maybe you are accustomed to designing screens and reports for sighted people. We learn the use of color, fonts, graphics, software, and PowerPoint presentations, for example, for displays and printed reports as input and output. However, from an HAI perspective, you will also want to think in terms of limitations on human vision. Factors such as length of the distance from display to the person performing a task, the angle of the display in relation to the person viewing it, the size and uniformity of the characters, the brightness, contrast, balance, and glare of the screen, and whether display is blinking or stable can all be designed to standards established through ISO and other national and international groups. Hearing Humans also have limits to the amount of stress their senses can withstand. Noisy laser printers and phone conversations can lead to overload on human hearing. Office workers can wear noise-canceling headphones or get personal music players like an iPad, but these solutions may have the effect of isolate, isolating a person from the organizational setting and may even diminish their capability to perform the task at hand. <clears throat> As an analyst, you will need to consider noise when you design office systems. Touch. When using an HCI perspective to evaluate the usefulness of keyboards and other input devices, we can rate the human computer fit as well as the dimensions examining the human computer task fit. Later videos, I will discuss the choices of human computer interfaces such as keyboard, direct manipulation using a stylus, a mouse, and touch screen. Considering human limitations, disabilities, and designs. All humans have limitations in their physical capabilities. Some are immediately visible, others are not. When designing from an HCI perspective, you start realizing that limitations are often discussed in terms of disabilities. The application of HCI to supporting and enhancing the physical capabilities of humans is one of the most promising application areas. Strides in biomedical engineering mean that there is research to support the blind or those with low vision, those who are deaf or have impaired hearing, and people with limited mobility. So here are some of the solutions that we have for visually or blind or visually impaired users. So using the Braille keyboard. So as you can see here, these are examples of the Braille keyboard. Here is also an ATM machine keypad also makes use of braille so that even the blind can actually make use of the ATM machine we also have for blind or visually impaired users high contrast screens or applications with changeable themes so an example of this is actually Windows so in Windows you can change the theme or you can change the contrast and other things so that it will be uh, visible to users we can also have magnifiers so again in windows we have the magnifier so this can make the screen or what is focused on the screen bigger 
Just like for example, in this case, it was enlarged to 200%. So by using the magnifier. Here's also uh, the settings in Microsoft Windows. So for visually impaired users, as I said last time, you can so you can click on settings and you know you can make text bigger. So you can apply this or make everything bigger in terms of percentage or make everything brighter, etc. So we can actually make some adjustments using Microsoft Windows, especially for the visually impaired. We can also have the narrator. So again, in Microsoft Windows, we have the narrator. So it says here that we updated the narrator, keyboard layout, so it closely matches the experience you may have, etc. So in other words, so instead of uh, just, uh, if you cannot see what is on the screen, it can be narrated by the computer. Then also, of course, we can use the speech recognition. If we can view the input devices, then maybe speech recognition can actually be used. How about for users with impaired hearing? So one rule is there should be a text version of all audio files so that uh, those who have impaired hearing can actually still be able to uh, maybe read uh, what is supposed to be inside the audio files. We can also make use of headphones if they cannot, if they can, uh, they have only impaired hearing but still can least, uh, hear, uh, can hear. So we can have, we can use headphones and then maybe just pop up the volume a little bit. So here is also an example of a hearing aid. It is actually a smart hearing aid. So here you can see here in this photo that uh, the application is actually so instead of for example if you can uh, hear then you can just view what is supposed to be being said by for example this seller. And for, how about those with limited mobility? Here as we can see here in this uh, video or in this picture rather so we have several devices that is being used by this one with limited mobility it's probably with limited mobility and it is actually uh, devices is connected to a computer using also artificial intelligence so they can enjoy computing and also enjoy their life even with limited mobility Here's an example of a keyboard that is used for one hand. So if you're single-handed, then maybe you can make use of this keyboard. Here's another example of a single-hand keyboard. And also, if you can use the keyboard because maybe you have just one hand or you have uh, your fingers are not complete, then most probably you can make use of the on-screen keyboard and also touch screens. So the on-screen keyboard is also one of the uh, utilities inside Microsoft Windows. And we can also make use of speech recognition rather than the keyboard. So for limited mobility. So you can see here, this person is talking to the computer. Now, at a glance, this is how a speech recognition, or how a speech recognition work. So, if you say something in speech signal, it will be pre-processed. So, the feature will be extracted and then it will be fed here. So, for training and testing. So, the training will be process using some acoustic models and language models that are actually coming from some sort of a database of speech chess and text so once you found the match or the pattern will be placed here and then of course it will look for a matching pattern so if the pat matching pattern is uh, found and then 
here we can say here that the speech now is transcripted so speech, speech trans- transcription so these are some of the ways that uh, those with uh, limitations are actually addressed by HCI. So thank you very much for viewing this video.